In 1906, a scientist by the name of Alois Alzheimer made a startling discovery while examining the brain of a deceased female patient. This patient had exhibited symptoms of forgetfulness, confusion, and an inability to form coherent sentences. Basically, this patient was Yui from k -On, except much older. What Alois Alzheimer noticed was that Yui's brain had shrunk. It was considerably smaller than a normal brain, and was littered with strange clumps that would later be known as plaques and tangles. Alois Alzheimer proclaimed that this was a peculiar, severe disease of the cerebral cortex. This disease would later be known as Alzheimer's disease, named in honor of the scientist who first noticed these abnormal clumps in a shrinking, degenerating brain. Dr. Alzheimer was actually not a Japanese kokose with huge milkers, but a middle-aged German man with a buzz cut and a monocle. However, since I'm an otaku scientist, I can't talk about science without mentioning my waifus. Alzheimer's disease and dementia are often used interchangeably. They're closely related and often go hand in hand, but they are as different as Rem and Ram. Dementia, or cognitive decline, is a symptom. Just like how diarrhea can be a symptom of the flu or something more severe like Crohn's disease, dementia can be a symptom of Parkinson's disease or traumatic brain injury, but most of the time, dementia is a symptom of Alzheimer's disease. In other words, Alzheimer's disease is like dementia's onesama because Alzheimer's disease must come before dementia. Alzheimer's disease is currently defined as the degeneration or atrophy of the brain due to the buildup of clumps called plaques and tangles in the brain. However, we know very little about Alzheimer's disease and the brain in general, so the way that we understand and define Alzheimer's disease is constantly evolving and changing. But why do plaques and tangles develop in our brains in the first place? To answer this question, we must first understand their true identities. Plaques are aggregates of a protein called amyloid beta, or A beta, while tangles are aggregates of a protein called tau. Amyloid beta is derived from a protein called the amyloid precursor protein, or APP, and APP is caught up by Senjogahara-like enzymes called secretases to get amyloid beta. Senjogahara is a knife-wielding tsundere who you could call either mommy or monster depending on the circumstance. Secretases are knife-like enzymes that can also be mommy or monster depending on the circumstance. When secretases are dere, the amyloid precursor protein is cut up into two pieces, and it's thought that these pieces play roles in helping brain cells grow and mature. However, when secretases are tsun, APP is cut up into three pieces, one of these pieces being amyloid beta. The older we get, the more tsun our secretases become, and the worse our brain gets at getting rid of amyloid beta leading to amyloid beta's accumulation in the brain and its eventual aggregation into toxic plaques. But what about tau? Unfortunately, we don't know much about tau and its tangles because tau aggregation cannot be easily studied in mice, the model organism that we use to study most diseases. Therefore, the predominant hypothesis that we use to make sense of Alzheimer's disease today is known as the amyloid cascade hypothesis. The amyloid cascade hypothesis states that amyloid beta aggregates into amyloid beta plaques, and plaques can do a lot of bad things, such as trigger the activation of our brain's immune cells. Our immune cells recognize plaques as monstrous abominations which need to be destroyed. However, plaques are not easily destroyed due to their sheer size, and immune cells can remain activated by plaques for extended periods of time, leading to chronic inflammation. Plaques can also accumulate in the synapse, the space between two neurons, and by congesting this space, plaques reduce the ability of the neuron to communicate with its neighboring neurons. In addition, plaques can also cause the neuron's mitochondria to go haywire. 
The mitochondria is supposed to be the powerhouse of the cell, producing energy. But when plaques come into the picture, the mitochondria becomes distorted and turns into this strange facility that produces abnormally high levels of a dangerous, potentially toxic molecule called hydrogen peroxide. In sum, the buildup of amyloid beta causes a cascade of negative changes, which result in massive neuron death and the eventual atrophy of the brain. Amyloid beta-induced brain atrophy, or Alzheimer's disease, can become so severe that a patient can have trouble remembering their past, remembering their loved ones, and even remembering themselves. In 2016, scientists finally made a major breakthrough in Alzheimer's disease research. The first drug to challenge Alzheimer's disease had arrived. This new hope, shiny and sparkling and full of promise, was called a monoclonal antibody, or MAB for short. MABs are a lot like Kaguya-sama because they're both highly loyal waifus that fall in love hard. Just like how Kaguya loves Shirogane-kun and only Shirogane-kun, MABs have high affinity or love for one kind of protein and only that one protein. MABs that love amyloid beta and only amyloid beta are called anti-amyloid beta MABs. Much like how Kaguya's vicious kiss rattled the fuck out of Shirogane, anti-amyloid beta MABs are able to take a hold of amyloid beta and rattle the fuck out of amyloid beta. When MABs bind to amyloid beta, amyloid beta isn't able to stick together and aggregate into plaques as well as it usually does. Also, an immune cell in the brain called the microglia is able to gobble up and destroy amyloid beta more easily. In other words, anti-amyloid beta MABs have the potential to reduce amyloid beta levels and amyloid beta plaque levels in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. Unfortunately, this isn't how the story ends. Three anti-amyloid beta MABs exist in the clinic today, and all three of them have deficiencies. Just like how all three of the three musketeers of Atsumanga Daio have deficiencies. Aducanumab was the first MAB developed for Alzheimer's disease. Aducanumab is capable of reducing amyloid beta levels and its plaques in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. However, aducanumab doesn't seem to have any effect on dementia or cognitive function, and no one really seems to know why. Lecanemab is the second anti-amyloid beta MAB. Lecanemab has an effect on cognitive function, unlike aducanumab, but it's far from a cure. Unfortunately, lecanemab can only slow down the rate at which Alzheimer's disease progresses. To add insult to injury, lecanemab is the most dangerous of the three anti-amyloid beta maps because during clinical trials, it resulted in terrible side effects. Donanumab is the third anti-amyloid beta map. Donanumab is much more efficacious than aducanumab, but it has the same problem that lecanemab has. It can only slow down the rate of cognitive decline. All of these MABs are really good at removing amyloid beta and its plaques from our brains, but none of these MABs are any good at improving cognitive function, which is the most important part. This is a conundrum that has confused scientists to this very day. Although MABs didn't turn out to be the cure we hoped they would be, Every quote-unquote failure in science has served as a stepping stone towards something better. Through the story of monoclonal antibodies, we were able to obtain compelling information that completely transformed our understanding of Alzheimer's disease. We learned that removing amyloid beta and its plaques is simply not enough, which has prompted scientists to dive deeper into the mechanisms of the disease and to come up with more creative solutions. In many countries, the percentage of senior citizens getting dementia has actually decreased over the last few decades. This is because we're living healthier lives than our predecessors. We are also more educated, and education has a transformational effect on our brains. Whenever we learn or challenge ourselves, our brains actually become more resilient and can maintain their cognitive function in spite of negative changes such as the accumulation of plaques and tangles. This is a phenomenon called cognitive resilience. 
Therefore, by watching this video and learning about Alzheimer's disease, you have improved your cognitive resilience and have staved off the onset of dementia in your brain. Thank you for watching and see you next video.